Right, so here I am needing to rewire my Stratocaster. It's not a genuine fender by any means, it's a parts caster that I've been building. Uh, finished it last year, wasn't too happy with electronics, so I've decided to start from scratch underneath the pickguard basically. So to do this I'm using um, higher quality components, it was a DIY guitar kit so I've removed the uh, Chinese riffraff, the Chinese pots and everything and replaced them with um, hopefully higher quality. So just to show you what we've got here, we're using CTS 250k audio pots, we've got a CRL spring action 5 way switch, switchcraft jack. Now this is actually used, but uh, it works fine. Uh, they are top quality jacks, so we might as well try and recycle while we can. We've got some vintage style cloth wire, cream and black, uh, a couple of foot of each, which will hopefully be enough. I've got a couple of sizes of heat shrink tubing here, which I'll show you what they'll be used for a bit further down the line. Now, as I'm trying to build a vintage style Strat, I've got um, a 0.1 MFD or 0.1 UF, whatever you want to call it, capacitor here. That will hopefully give me some slightly darker tones. I do like a, a slightly darker strat. Um, but I'm also going to add a treble bleed circuit, a treble bleed mod or capacitor, whatever you want to call it, on the volume control to help clean up some of the muddy tones that will result from the darker capacitor. Now the pickups themselves, the pick guard is looking a bit messy. It's been covered with copper tape for shielding. But the pickups are the... Seymour Duncan SS1 or whatever they're called, the vintage Stratocaster. So I'm hoping when everything's put together, it sounds how I'm hoping it will. Right, so as you can see now, I've uh, assembled the components into the Strat Guard. I've got my three CTS parts here. Uh, with these two parts, I do like to bend the, the lugs backwards slightly, so technically they're at a, a right angle in comparison to the body. Just gives you a bit more space when you wind between the two. Uh, my CRL spring action switch is screwed in. Now it doesn't matter what way round you have the switch, it will work exactly the same regardless of what way it's facing as long as it's wired up properly. Personally I tend to have the spring facing away from the rest of the controls as it just makes it easier when you have put in the wires into these four lugs here. So the first thing you need to do before you actually get into the nitty gritty of everything it's the tin or the lugs that you're going to need to be connecting. So follow in your wiring diagram. You want to lightly tin the lugs. You don't want to fill the holes. Just ever so slightly. Give them a little coating. As this makes everything a lot easier. If you're wondering why I'm tinning this lug here, even though it will get grounded, it's because, well, you can either have a snippet of wire between the two, like this, or you can bend it onto the back of the pot and solder it in place that way. <laughs> Whichever way you do it, it's still a lot easier with a light coat of solder already there. Now, tinning every single lug that you need, as well as the ends of your wires, before putting them in the joint, leads to a more stable electrical and mechanical connection. Now obviously we're only really interested in the electrical connection, but if the mechanical connection is weak, the whole structure is going to be weak. Okay, so as you can see here, I've tinned all the various lugs that need wires attached to them. You'll also see, if I just hold that up, I've put a blob of solder on here. That's my ground point for the pickups and probably the ground to the bridge as well. I've grounded this lug up against the side of the pot. That's not going to be used. Um, and I've also laid down my ground wire here, connecting the three pots together. Now, if you're putting this into a genuine fender, or you've got a, um, a 
a metal base plate there. You won't need to ground the pots together, but uh, it's something I do out of habit anyway. Um, I've also used tinned copper wire there, as opposed to the black cloth wire that came with the kit. Just personal preference, so I will be using the majority of the cream wire to crack on with the rest of the wiring. So the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to start wiring up the switch and uh, so we're going to, for arg argument's sake, we're going to label these lugs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the first four are facing away from the main controls and 5 to 8 are facing inwards towards the main controls. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect lug 1 and lug 8 together. It's easy to see on your wiring diagram, um, so we'll just crack on with that first off. Just clean the solder tip, it's looking a bit dirty. Okay, now, because we tinned all of these lugs earlier, it really doesn't take much at all to make a connection here. Let's hold that there. Let the solder flow. Voila. Let that cool. Don't blow on it. It will take a couple of seconds. And as I've said, you'll connect that to lug 8. But before we solder that one down, you also need to connect lug 8 to the input of the volume bot. So we're going to feed that wire through as well. I'll just pinch that all together. Okay, so they're all in. I can get on and solder that again. I'm going to have to replace my solder tip at some point. It's oxidising very quickly. And there we go. So there you can see lugs 1 to 8 are connected together and lug 8 is also going to be going to the input on the volume controller. Now if you suffer a little bit of perfection like me you can always snip these tool wire heads off. Perfect. Moving on. Lug 5. This one right here is going to the output or the middle lug of the middle tone control. So it seems simple enough, let's give that one a go. Just push the cloth back there, feed it through. Clean my solder tip. And the final wire, lug six, which you need to connect to the outer lug here of the second tone control. La -de -la -de -la. Feed it through. <laughs> if your solder tip's anything like mine, you, you'd be cleaning it with every single joint you make, which is not ideal at all. Now also, never feed the solder onto the tip. You want to heat the lug and feed the solder. 
onto the mug itself. Right, so there you go. That's the switch all wired up. So you've got these three wires here. This one here is going to go to the input of your volume control. This wire here, lug 6, is going to go to the output of the second tone control, the most inward lug facing you, or the switch even. And lug 5 is going to the output of the middle tone control, the middle lug there. So we'll just crack on and do that. Clean the soldering iron. So that wire's actually a little bit long, so we'll just trim that ever so slightly. And finally, the wire from lug 6, this one here, goes to the most inward lug, or the lug nearest the switch, on the second tone control. So we'll go ahead, push that cloth back. Feed it through. Now a lot of guys text whoever they they recommend that you feed the wire through and actually wrap it round. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that because should you ever need to replace or change, it's a right nightmare in getting them out. Just feed it through the hole. And as long as your solder joint's good, you're not gonna have any issues whatsoever. So Right, so there you go, it's pretty much the initial harness actually done actually, you've got your three 250k parts, volume, tone, tone, you've got your ground wire, you've grounded that lug that's not going to be needed, you've got your five way switch here all wired up nicely, going to the respective lugs. Right, so moving on to the pickups, um, just to show you what I've done here, I've used the heat shrink tubing that I showed you earlier, just to keep the wires running together in the same line, just makes it all a bit neat and tidy. So I've got one, a small piece up here to keep the hot and the ground pickup wires together. Uh, I've got one here that runs down because I want all three of my live wires coming around together. Another one here keeping the ground wires together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ground the pickups to this point here, the pre-soldered back of the pot casing and then my live my cream wires are soldered to the relevant lugs on the switch. So we'll start off by grounding the back into the back of the pot. Clean my soldering iron. And I'll pin these three down. This wire is actually frustratingly short so I'm going to have to ground that separately I think because it won't quite reach. Eh, we'll see. Nah, I won't reach. Right, 
We'll come back to that one. Let it cool. Repeat the process with this one. Yeah, it's really short actually. That might cause an issue. We shall see. Should be fine. Nice, nice, if not annoying. Okay, so next you want to take the larger size heat shrink tubing. It doesn't actually have the dimensions on it, but it's 7mm. It shrinks to 3.5 and, and we'll use that to funnel all of the live or hot or whatever you call them, pickup wires together. Now, you, I don't have a lighter at hand, but you'd use a lighter to shrink it. Um, but we can do that afterwards. And what I want to do... Will that squeeze through there? Nah, that won't reach. Okay. So this long one here is the bridge. Which goes to the first lug. That's my neck. Which goes to lug two. Middle lug three. Bridge lug four. Clean the solder. Let's go for the middle pickup. And we'll give that one a trim because it's long and annoying. And finally, the bridge pickup. So there we have it, as you can see. Now all the pickups are connected, just need to uh, obviously take a lighter, or I could use the soldering iron, use the heat from that, just to shrink this tubing, um, hence the name, heat shrink tubing. And the final piece of the puzzle, we need to add the capacitor, the treble bleed, and of course the jack. So we'll move on to that next. Right, so as you can see there, hopefully, I'm just going to install the phone book wax capacitor in there. So, the easiest way to do this is to put it on, it doesn't matter if it's this capacitor or an orange drop or a paper and oil or whatever, it doesn't matter the shape. Put it on the back of the volume pot, uh, the middle tone pot, sorry. Now thread 
its lead through this lug here and thread it all the way through to the middle lug of the outer tone pot there. The second lead will get grounded around the side of the pot. So we'll just solder them first two in place. Those first two in place, sorry. Can at least get my English right if I'm teaching people, I'm trying to show people how to wire a shutter cost. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by just soldering this one into end into place. Let it cool. The issue with these are these are wax and the wax does have a tendency to melt on the edges here. Um, so the key is to do it quick, which is what I'm gonna try and do here. And then we'll take the cutters and cut out the extra there. Ooh, that's gone flying. I'll pick it up later. So let's have a look. Well, yeah, you can see the wax has started to melt a little bit, but I can live with that. It will be fine. Uh, so that's all sold in place. We just need to ground this to the side of the pot now. So now I normally tend to do it on the inner casing just there. So we'll crack on with that. Again, you need to try and be quick due to the heat from the soldering iron has a tendency to melt the wax. I mean, obviously, if you take an age doing it, you're going to have all kinds of bombs and wax everywhere, which is not ideal for anyone, not least your guitar. Well, I've actually cheated a bit there, but we'll see. Hopefully that's gone in. Super. Right, so that's pretty much ready now. The final thing we need to do is to install the jack. Um, I'm going to see how it sounds without the treble lead first, to be honest. Um, haven't got many of them left. I do sell quite a few, so I would be a bit stupid to use it for myself. As my dad once said, a lot of barmen go out of business because they keep drinking their own profits, so I can't use my own stock. But, uh, right then, so we'll crack on with the jack. Now this time I will be using the black wire, so... Obviously it's better to use more than less, you can always trim it down to size, so take about 15 to 20 centimetres of each. Now the cream goes into the middle lug here, middle lug of your volume control, solder that in place, oh my bad, excuse me, beautiful. And the black wire will be acting as the ground, so the easiest way to do this is to solder it onto the back of the pot. But you can use the solder that's already there from the grounded lug, and we'll just add it into that little pod over there. Now, it's actually how you do this. I tend to try and keep these wires underneath the main ground wire. It just comes a hassle when you're trying to install it. Just clean the soldering iron again.
happy days. That's nicely in there. So yeah, like I say, I tend to keep these wires going underneath the ground. Really, it doesn't matter. Easy. And again, if you've got any left, just use a bit of rubber tube in there to keep these two wires together. Uh, when you have a larger at hand, you'll shrink them all down. And that is the vast majority of wiring a Stratocaster. So uh, when we come back, we'll have this installed inside the pit guard and we'll install the jack. And I'll also show you how to do the screwdriver test. So you can test if everything's working as it should before you go through the long hassle of putting on your strings and everything like that. So you also need to add a ground wire from the back of the body and bot which will run all the way through the guitar body to the underside which you'll solder to the tram claw normally. Um, which is what, what you'll see on a lot of diagrams, ground to bridge or ground to tremolo. This is essentially that. It's not essentially. This is that. So, same process. I'm going to ah, I'm going to use the back of the volume pot. All good. So now we'll screw this back down onto your guitar body, thread these two through to the jack cavity, and this wire goes through, you should have a hole underneath the bridge pickup, which you feed through to ground to the tremolo claw. Right, so I'll screw my pick guard back down. I've got the two jack wires here that I fed through the hole. And on the underside, if you can see, yeah, there's the ground wire that we sold to the back of the volume pot. And that's been forced through as well. Okay, so we'll start with the jack. Pretty key elements. So when it comes to your jack, they're all the same regardless of the brand in the sense that the inner ring here is your ground lug and the other one is the hot, active, live, whatever you choose to call it. So we're going to solder the black wire, which is our ground from the volume pot, to the ground lug, the inner ring and the cream by the process of elimination to this lug here. So we'll turn on the soldering iron, we'll get it nice and hot. What I do like to do is use some heat shrink tubing just to cover the joint when it's done. So I'll feed that down now. Just push back the cloth. You can always cheat and use some pliers just to hold it, pull it back a bit more. Okay, so we're going to feed that through. Like so. I'm actually just going to move it onto the pit guard because I don't want to burn the finish. I won't burn the finish either. But... Okay. Obviously, if you're doing this on the genuine fender, I would be inclined to not put it on the guitar. But Feed the rubber tubing back down, just to cover the joint, and voila. Obviously when you have a lighter, I don't have one at hand, 
burn that, don't burn it, just apply heat and let it shrink. Uh, repeat the exact same process with the other lug and the other wire. Kind of force it through. Well, I've actually forgotten to put the heat shrink tubing on the white wire. But, right, so I've turned uh, the guitar okay over, as it is. and here we have the ground wire that we connected to the back of the volume pot. Uh, you feed it through, you should have a hole underneath your pickup, as already mentioned. And this wire basically is quite essential, it's the main ground. So if you think about it, you ground it to somewhere under here. These are connected to the strings. When the guitar touches the strings, there you go. So, I mean, ideally, the best place to put it there's a latch, like a little latch just under here, uh, where you can wedge it in there and solder it in place. So we'll have a go at that. You want to be careful not to burn your finish of the guitar. I feel like I'm conducting surgery here. All good in the hood. Alright, so that's all done. Everything's wired up now. So what we'll do next is um, I'll show you what is also known as the right, screwdriver test. So here we are, test. final step of the journey. Um, I'm going to show you quickly the what's known as the screwdriver test. So. Uh, just to show you, I've got my amp plugged in, no strings, crucially. Um, now, it doesn't have to be a screwdriver, just because it's the easiest thing to use. The idea is to test every pickup works before you reinstall everything. I mean, there's a couple of screws not in the pick guard yet, it saves me hassle. Um, just turn that gain down. So the idea being, test each switch position to make sure it works. So as you can see, the switch is all the way forward. So technically the neck pickup should be working. Boom. Nothing else switched on. Next position should be the neck and the middle one together. Good stuff. Middle position should just be the middle pickup. Good stuff. Next position should be the middle and the bridge. They're both working nicely, and the bridge pickup alone, happy days. So all the pickups are working, let's just have a quick dabble of the tone controls. It's not going to be too easy to tell, but you can hear a nice difference there. Good stuff. Right, there we have it. That is how to wire a Stratocaster. So thank you very much everyone for watching. Um, hopefully you've seen a couple of nice tips there that you might not have been previously aware of. Um, so yeah, thank you.